In this video, I'm gonna go over what the right amount of protein that you should be consuming on a regular basis is. And it's really gonna depend on obviously how much you weigh, but we know protein is so important for blood sugar stability, stabilizing your blood sugar. The more stable your blood sugar is, the better your energy is gonna be, the better your cognition, memory, um, your ability to think sharply and quickly is going to be. So protein is so critical for that. It also helps us maintain lean body mass. We know, especially as people age, they can develop sarcopenia or muscle wasting, muscle loss. And the more muscle you lose as you age, the higher rate of morbidity or chronic disease development and mortality or your risk of, of dying. So it's super important to maintain your body mass. And we know that consuming protein really helps with that. It's so important for keeping lean body mass. It helps reduce cravings. So you're not overeating and constantly thinking about different ultra processed foods that are really detrimental to your overall health and well-being. And it helps you burn fat for fuel so you can stay lean, mean, and really a fat burning machine, right? And that's what we want. So protein is going to help us get the results when it comes to our body composition, when it comes to our energy, our mental performance that we want. There's also compounds in protein that help with good sleep quality. There's Compounds in protein that help with good liver function, detoxification, so we can get rid of wastes that help with our immune system. We use protein to and amino acids to create white blood cells so we can have a healthy immune function. So protein is so critical. And then when we're looking at protein, there's certain types of proteins or certain types of amino acids because protein is made up of amino acids. There are certain amino acids in protein called branch chain amino acids. That's leucine, isoleucine and valine. Leucine is the most critical when it comes to muscle protein synthesis. And we know again, maintaining muscle mass or building muscle mass is so critical to our overall health. It helps suck uh, glucose out of the bloodstream to keep our blood sugar stable, helps improve insulin sensitivity. Muscles actually help release as we're moving muscles and building muscle, releases compounds called myokines that stimulate brain function, stimulate something called brain-derived neurotropic factor in our brain, which is like miracle growth for, for our brain. So it helps with uh, neurogenesis and synaptogenesis, developing new neurons and new gaps and, and little gaps and connections between our neurons so we can think sharply and quickly and have really advanced level thought. So I could go on and on about all these benefits of protein, but the purpose of this video is how much protein should you consume? So leucine threshold for muscle protein synthesis is roughly two to three grams per meal. So you wanna get about two to three grams of leucine per meal. Leucine is highest in animal proteins other than bone broth or collagen. So there's bone broth, there's collagen proteins out there. They're very low in leucine, okay? They're higher in glycine, proline, hydroxyproline, which are all important for healthy skin, a healthy gut lining, healthy joints, um, healthy nails, things like that, healthy bones, but not important for muscle protein synthesis. So if you're just relying on bone broth or collagen protein as like a supplemental protein source, and you're, get, and you're really focusing on that as far as a lot of your protein, you're not gonna hit your lutein threshold, which should be two to three grams. Now, in your typical protein sources, like your animal-based protein sources and most plant-based protein sources, beans, legumes, things like that, it's roughly eight to 10% um, of the protein content is gonna be leucine. So to get two to three grams, again, that, that threshold is gonna be based on your weight. The more muscle mass you have, the higher leucine you need to hit that threshold. The lower muscle mass or the lower body weight in general, the lower amount of leucine you're gonna need. So as a general idea, I tell people 30 to 50 grams of protein in each meal eating, let's say two to three times a day, you know, that's gonna get you somewhere between, you know, what, what roughly 60 to 150 grams of protein, which is pretty good range to focus on. But let's go by weight, 100 to 125 pounds, you don't need as much protein, okay? 20 to 30 grams should be fine. If you're under 100 pounds, like, you know, if you're thinking about your 10 year old child that weighs 75 pounds, they might need 15 to 20 grams of protein in a meal to hit that leucine threshold. 100, 125 pounds, roughly 20 to 30 grams. Okay, 125 to 150 pounds, roughly 25 to 35 grams per meal. And then going off the day, 
if you're 100 to 125 pounds, roughly 70 to 100 grams over the course of a day, 70 to 100 grams of protein a day. If you're 125 to 150 pounds, roughly 80 to 120 grams of protein in a day. If you go up to like your body weight and protein, so if you weigh 150 pounds, you eat 150 grams of protein, great. I mean, there's not really gonna be consequences to that. The only consequences to eating protein is are if you don't have a restricted time eating window, meaning if you're eating protein from 7 a.m., you have your first meal, and you're eating every three to four hours until 10 p.m. at night, 11 p.m. at night, that's a problem. Okay, now if you're a bodybuilder and you're really trying to put on a lot of muscle, that works. You will, you will, it will help you put on muscle. However, you'll also increase the overall inflammatory activity in your body. You'll increase the amount of senescent or old aged damaged cells. So I don't recommend that. I recommend a tighter eating window. Let's say you're eating your meals in a 10 hour eating window from let's say 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. or maybe an eight hour window from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So an eight hour window, that is gonna give your body time while you're fasting, while you're not eating, to go th undergo autophagy and to break down the senescent mitochondria, the aged, damaged, zombie cell mitochondria, zombie cells in your body, get rid of all those, uh, those damaged cells so you don't end up replicating them and causing chronic disease processes in your body. So compress your eating window, but make sure you're hitting your protein levels during the meals that you're consuming. So going back here, 150 to 200 pounds. So I'm in this range, I'm about 170 pounds. I aim for 30 to 50 grams or more of protein in a meal. A lot of times I get a lot more than that because I'm also lifting weights, I'm very active and that's gonna increase the amount of protein my body needs to recover. And, and you're going for roughly 100 to 150 or more grams of protein in a day, okay? And then if you're over 200 pounds, it's roughly the same, 30 to 50 grams, 100 to 150 grams of protein a day. Now, if you're over 200 pounds, full of muscle, you might need a little bit more protein. If you're over 200 pounds, but you're like, hey, I'm 30% body fat, I wanna get, I wanna drop 5%, 10%, 15% body fat, depending on if you're male or female, and your health goals, then sticking in this range is usually good because you don't want to overconsume overall calories. And sometimes if you're consuming 200, 250 grams of protein, 200 grams of protein is roughly 800 calories right there. For most people, if you're looking to lose weight, you wanna bring your calories to roughly 2,000, 2,500, somewhere in that range. Um, if you're a large person, maybe, uh, maybe less. And so oftentimes if you're over consuming the protein, you might be over consuming overall calories. Although that can be hard to do because when you are consuming a lot of protein, you tend to have more satiation, less cravings, less desiring food, lower appetite. So um, you tend to stay in a good calorie, overall calorie range. You also have lower levels of insulin. Insulin is your fat storage hormone. So when insulin's more stable, you tend to obviously burn fat more effectively for fuel. So usually going higher on protein is not gonna cause problems as long as you keep it in that time restricted window. That's really where the magic happens is you want, so the, the criticisms of protein are, it can increase your risk of kidney failure, of cancer, right? Heart disease, a lot of different um, chronic health problems. And that's true if you're eating it again in a very large eating window. When you tighten your eating window, you get the benefits of the protein without the downsides. And so that's why I recommend consuming your meals in let's say a six to 10 hour eating window and really focusing on hitting your protein levels you know, focus on how much protein you're consuming in each meal, then fill your plate with healthy fats, colorful fruits and vegetables, whole real foods as much as possible, reducing the amount of ultra processed foods. If you do that, you're gonna do really, really well. If you wanna do you know, whey protein or something like that, it's great as well, I use that too. I recommend a grass-fed whey protein or if you want a plant protein, plant uh, pea protein or something like that, hemp protein, that's great, okay? But don't rely on that solely right? That should be more of a supplemental source of getting these protein levels. And really try to focus on real whole foods, grass-fed red meat, pasture-raised eggs, organic, ideally pasture-raised yogurt can be really helpful. I like Greek yogurt that I consume regularly um, to increase protein content. Uh, pasture-raised eggs I mentioned are a great source. You've got grass-fed meats. If you're able to do dairy, 
Grass-fed, organic, or raw cheeses can be really, really helpful as well. Um, and then from a plant source, you might get some in legumes. They don't digest as well, so you have to see how your body absorbs them. But legumes are, are a source of protein. And of course, you can use protein powders and things like that as needed as well. So hopefully that was really helpful for you guys, answered a lot of your questions. Be sure to share this video with anybody that you know and that you care about, and we'll see you guys in a future training. Be blessed.